This is David Orlovsky, and this is our special Tishba of podcast. This podcast will be coming out on Tisha B'Av, and uh, it will, I hope, give people some uh, understanding and insight into Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is a very hard thing. We spoke about this in the last podcast. It's very hard for us to relate to. It's 2,000 years that we've been in Gullis. It's the new normal. We expect it that way. And uh, for us to understand it, it's very, it's very difficult. Uh, I had this chus for a number of years of going out to Moshe of Matas Yahu, and uh, Rabbi Lef would have a kinnis in the morning, and he would speak before a number of the kinnis. They didn't go through all the kinnis. He'd speak to set up the kinna, to give you insight into it. This event continues to this day, and uh, I haven't been there in years, but I know they used to have to put speakers outside because there was such an overflow crowd. The reason people went, and the person who brought me was a very chosh of avreich, brought me the first time, is because it's very difficult for us to get meaning from the kinas, for understanding them. I don't know if I mentioned this last time or not, but when I was growing up, they had these paper kinas, uh, offset printed, very cheap, hard to, hard to read. And the reason is because the minig is to take them and leave them in shul at the end of Tishbov. You won't need them next year. And, uh, and people would sit on the floor and say kinas, try to say kinas, uh, as their, their feet were falling asleep and, and they were falling asleep. And uh, it's very hard to relate to it, especially if you don't prepare it beforehand, if you don't read them through and, you know, Bishas uh, Maisa to try to first start learning of the kinnis is really, is really too much of a deal on, a, on a, the amount of time that you have to say all the kinnis. And, um, and so I saw this program where we left. We made a similar program here in Harnof. It's still continuing. Um, Rabbi Margolin runs it now, and uh, it's called The Meaningful Tisha B'av. I'm sure you can find it if you're interested. They have a live feed. Um, various speakers speaking mm-hmm. about the different kinnis. Uh, there were a few years I used to do this in Rabbi Senta's yeshiva in the morning where I would, on my own level, try to be masbe the kinnis. And, uh, and the reason these programs exist is because for the average person, it's very hard to go through a kinnah. It's an Aramaic and the words are hard. And there are many, many references to it that a person has to, has to be able to understand in order to, to get shot in the kinna. There's an effort, an effort involved. And so therefore, uh, they have these different programs. I have taken in the last few years to try to recover just sitting on the floor and saying kinnis. I prepare beforehand. I read through the kinnis, I, I try to understand as much as I can. Beforehand, I look at my foreshim. So when I go into the kinnah, I let the kinnah move me. And uh, we really could speak about a lot of the kinnis. We don't really have the time in this forum to do it. Uh, but um, I will have up on my website some of the um, kinnis that I've said in the past, explanations that will be available on rabbiolowski.com. And uh, if you want to listen to some of those uh, on Tisha B'Av as well. So as I was preparing to speak on this Tisha B'Av, and I'm going to pick out one kinna to try to talk about. So there's one kinna, I don't know why, because there are some that, uh, there are a number of them that you can feel the pain and the horror in the kinna. There are some that are just so powerful. This one, for some reason, almost always moves me to tears. In my particular kinna, it's kinna Lamed Aleph. Now, I, 
I don't know where every place, I've been in a number of places where they sing it. Um, this is the niggin that I know Rabbi Lef used to sing when he used to do it. Um, perhaps it goes back to tells, I, I don't know. But this is the way they used to sing it. Eshtukad bekirbi Mahaloisi alibi Betsesi mi metrayim Kinim aira leman azkihira Betsesi mi rushalayim Az yashir mahishem Shir lo yinosheh Betsesi mi metrayim I'll just do one more. It goes on. Oh, like an anna, but say, see me, Rushalayim. As you can see from the kinna, it's a contrast. And, and I guess, I guess it's the contrast that makes such a deep impression on me. Because um, when you talk about all the unbelievable things when we left Mitzrayim, and by contrast, all the terrible things we left Yerushalayim. We say in Hallel, Mikimi me offer dal, me ashbois yerim evyain, la hashivi im nadivim. You pulled me out of the garbage heaps to put me up with the great princes. There's a contrast. There's a contrast. There's a, a Gemara in Tainus that says that they used to fast for the, mo, mo, they had Ma'amodos, that they used to fast when they were bringing the Korbanos. They didn't fast on Sunday. It's interesting because Tisha B'Av is on Sunday. They didn't fast on Sunday. Why? Because they felt that going from all of the eating and the celebrating on Shabbos to fasting would be too hard for people. The contrast would be too difficult. It's, it's often the contrast that drives home where we are. We had recently the Parshas Masse, all the different stops that we made, and we review that we came to one stop called Elim. In Elim, there were 12 fountains, there were 70 Tamarim, and the 70s of Canaan sat around the trees, sat under the trees, and each Shevet sat by a Ma'ayin. And it was just wonderful because we felt like we finally had some kind of manucha. We had some kind of a rest. Here's a spiritual and a physical experience. And then Moshe says, back out into the desert. Back out into the desert. And it's the contrast. People have never had. Lahavdil. Yeah. Um... I uh, I spoke in Australia, and uh, from Israel to get to Australia is, is over twenty hours. So they flew me business class. Very hard to go back to coach after you've flown business class. If you've never flown business class, you don't know any better. You know, you know, you're used to sitting that way. But but when you've been, you know, on a high level, and suddenly it's taken away. We left Mitzrayim and we had Moshe and we had Aaron and we had the Kohanim and we had the Anani Akavod and we had the Mon and we had the Be'er and we had the Torah and everything was, was bright and brilliant. We left Jerusalem dragged away into captivity. Yerushalayim, which was the most beautiful city in the world, 
and the cultural center, religious center, and intellectual center. It was an ear from Lashon of La Orer to wake you up. You came to Yerushalayim, you were a different person. And we're dragged out. Dragged out by people humiliating us, humiliating HaKadosh Baruch Hu, humiliating everything we stand for. The famous story of the Tells of Rosh Hashiva. They take him out of his house to kill him, the Nazis. And they hit him in the head with the rifle butt, and he falls to the ground bleeding. And he says, where is your God now? He says, he's not my God, he's your God too. And one day you'll recognize that. And you lose everything. You lose everything. They burn down our shuls. They drag us away. They take away everything we have. The, the contrast from us being so great in, uh, in the Holocaust by Martin Gilbert, he writes that in the Jews from Western Europe, there were many more suicides than when the Jews from Eastern Europe. Because the Jews from Western Europe felt that we were part of the secular world. We were part of the non-Jewish world. We were accepted. And to be treated this way was just so devastating. Rosh Hashanah the Jews in Eastern Europe were used to being mistreated and the contrast wasn't as terrible. But when we're the people of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who he took out of Mitzrayim, Benisim V'Niflos, Betsesi Mi Mitzrayim, and then we leave Yerushalayim. And it's been a very long time. I'm not talking about the physical location. It's an unbelievable thing that we have access to Yerushalayim, that we can go and we can dive in by the Kaisal and we can, you know. But how could we miss the fact that we go there? And I went with somebody once. It was at night. And the Golden Dome the top of the Kosh Kedoshim was all lit up. The person says to me, wow, isn't that beautiful? There's a, there's a dome of another religion over our Beis HaMikdash, over our Kosh Kedoshim. We go there at night, we look at it, and we think to ourselves, Baruch Hashem, we have access to the outside retaining wall of the Harabayas. That's something. For 19 years, we didn't even have that. There have been periods in history when, when it was made into Ailey Capitolina by the Romans. We weren't allowed to be in the city. There were times we weren't allowed in. I came to you in darkness and I almost passed you by. Oh, you come by and you sense thousands of years of history. Thousands of years of history. So. But it's a shadow. It's a shadow of a shadow. We're shadow people living in the shadows. We, we, don't, we don't understand. There's going to come a time where instead of that dome, there's going to be a base of Mikdash on that mountain. Second base of Migdash was about twice the height of that dome that's there now. And when the base of Migdash is the way it's supposed to be, there's a cloud hovering over it. When they bring the korbanos, a fire comes down from Shemayim and burns them up. There's a, there's a power. We'll go into the base of Migdash and we'll bring our korbanos, korbanos from Lashon L'Karev to come close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And now we have remembrance. We can say the Kabbanais. We can learn the Kabbanais. We can, we can get some kind of limited experience to it. Shavtamayim b'sasan mi maynea Yeshua. Say the Chazal. 
Yeah. Yoyna Anavi got his Navua from the Beis HaMikdash. It came down and it was able to be drawn up and felt by the Jewish people. Now we have a shadow of that. We have a, we have a remembrance of that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine your Kohen Gadol goes into the Kosha Kedoshim on Yom Kippur. The red string turns white because Baruch Hu shows us all of our sins have been forgiven. <clears throat> it's hard for us to even imagine the greatness that Klai Yisrael has. Because it's been so long. The Medrash says that uh, after the Chorban, all the flowers in Yerushalayim turned into rocks. Can you imagine what Yerushalayim looked like? You go around now and you look at the rocks, you know, and it was, it was covered with flowers. It was so fertile, so beautiful, so rich. But say, see me, Mitzrayim. The Gan Shemayim, Mitzoya Zuvu Mayim, but say, see me, Mitzrayim. The bread fell from the sky. And we drank the water from the rock. You know, there was a miracle. The mud tasted like whatever you wanted it to. The same miracle by the Be'er. It tasted like whatever you wanted. Every possibility was open to you. Every opportunity was open to you. Everyone knows the Gemara. When we left Yerushalayim, Yishmael was waiting for us. Gave us salted food. And then gave us bags filled with air so that when we drank them, we died, thinking we were going to get water. We got nothing. What a contrast. What a contrast. Chagai and Navi says, Simu levavchem amaseichem. Take a look. Your meat doesn't taste right. Your clothes don't feel right. The wine doesn't have its usual effect. Nothing's right in the world because there's no base of Mikdash. Why isn't this a challenge to you? Don't you remember when we left Mitzrayim? Have a mitzvah every single year to sit down at the Seder and to try to remember. But say, see, me Mitzrayim. Until we finally... We came into Eretz Israel. We were there for 850 years till the Chorban. 850 years. That's a... 800... Can you even imagine such a thing? 2019. So go back to... to 11... Uh, 1180. We're dealing with spans of time that are difficult for us to even imagine. And yet, it's almost 2,000 years since we've had that. And we live. La anam rorim, umayim hamorim, betsesimi rushalayim. The bitter waters that we drink. And all of the machlaikasim, and all of the difficulties, and all of the shortcomings, and all the places where we could have been. Greatness. Greatness. And, and this cannot, to me, contrast those. And I'll tell you another reason that this kinnah has particular meaning to me. For the most part, all the kinnahs are the same. Pain and suffering. And the pain and suffering goes on and it continues. Shulchan but say, see me, Mitzrayim. When we left Egypt, we had the Mishkan and all the Kalim of the Mishkan. Elil v'soiva, v'seo matseva, but say, see me, Rushalayim. All the abominations, 
all the things that we have to live with. We've reached the point that even here in Eretz Yisrael comes the December holidays and they start putting up, you know, decorations. Used to be you didn't even know. You had to go to Bethlehem if you wanted to, to celebrate it. Now you can find it anywhere. We spent 2,000 years under the control of other people's religions, other people's values, other people's cultures. Jewish kids unless they're really uh, sheltered, they feel like they're missing out. They're missing out on the, on the main culture. All the to'eva and the psalim, the matzevis, all of the things that's worshipped by the nations of the world. Josephus writes, we Jews are not given to the writing of many books. The Torah has always been our entertainment. We Yidin used to sit and learn. That was it. That was enough for us. We didn't need so many other distractions and so many other things. But after it goes through the whole thing and you reach the last keter, Tahiro Tehuda, Uchle Hachemda, Vetesi Mimetrayim, Sasain Vesim Chavanas Yagain Vianacha, Vishu Vila Yerushalayim. He ends on a positive note. I remember they made this into a song years ago. Sasain v'simcha and as yagain v'yanacha v'shuvi v'shuvi l'yerushalayim. Happiness and rejoicing and no more sadness and groaning when we'll go back to Yerushalayim. It's, it ends on a positive note. It's the laughter of Rabbi Akiva when he sees the Har Bayas and the Kosh Kedoshim as a place of wild animals. Because he sees the Geula. It's an amazing thing, if you think about it. Tish of night, we sit on the ground, sit on a stool, and comes Chatzois. We get up and we start sitting on chairs. They haven't even set fire to the base of Mikdash yet. They set fire to the base of Mikdash towards the end of the ninth, to the point that there were those who wanted to make the fast on the tenth. And then it burnt through the night of the tenth and until Chatzis. And it's not even there yet. We're already getting up. Those who mourn the loss of Yerushalayim will be zeichet to see it rebuilt. Tishbav is the result, but it's also the cure. It wasn't bad luck. It wasn't the result of historical forces. The Chazal give a fascinating marshal about a fellow who's on a mountain and he's painting a picture, painting the landscape of the mountains, the view, and he, and he makes a masterpiece and he's so taken with it that he keeps backing up so that he can get it on a better perspective to the point where he's almost ready to fall off the cliff and someone sees him and can't stop him. So he destroys the picture. The person said, you destroyed my masterpiece. And he says, and I saved you. Because Baruch Hu pours out his wrath, our eitzim va'avanim, on stone and wood. When we sit on the floor on Tisha B'Av and remember, and we contrast that with the greatness that we had, then we understand that if we know where we came from, and we can see where we are, then we have the possibility to pull ourselves up and out, to be able to reach the end of the kinah. Sahasain 
It's unlikely. I'm not a prophet. But I'm repeating what I hear from big people. It's unlikely that we won't be zoichet to see Mashiach. I mean, we're so at the end of time. So many simonim, so many things are going on. Three years ago, somebody asked Rechaim Kanievsky if Mashiach is coming. He said, he's not coming. He's outside knocking on the door. So sign Vesim Chaven as Yagain Viana Vishuvi Vishuvi Yerushalayim. We're not observing Tishabov this year. Not on Tishabov, the 10th above. There was no Tishabov this year. And maybe there won't be any more. Maybe this is the last time we'll have to sit on the floor. And this I cry. As I reflect on where we were and where we are. If you know where you came from, and you know where you are, then you should be able to have the vision to see where we can go. The laughter of a Rebbe Akiva who can say, if there are wild animals coming out of the Kashukad Ocean, then we've hit the bottom. We can, we can only go up. From here, we just wait for the Geula. And so in the middle of Tisha B'av, we get up off the ground. We sit on a chair and we switch. We switch from the Ushlach Hanezev Yafas Yerushalayim. We switch from all of the terrible things we've lost on Tishabov to starting to reflect on all the things that there will be when the Geula comes. In one of the concentration camps. So the story, I heard the story from somebody who claims he heard it from someone who was there. Needless to say, with all the starvation, all the breaking, all the, all the psychological torture, how do you get the will to go on? So when they would come home at the end, broken from the starvation and the work, the Rebbe would gather together all of his chassidim and he says, Reboisai, what's going to be? We're going to go daven in shul and then we're going to have to go home to our wives. They're going to make us a chant. We're going to sit down and have a suda. Let me see how you're going to walk home. And he'd get them all together and they would walk around the, the, the bunk and he says, we're walking back from shul. We're, we're going home. We're going to our wives, to our families. To see outside of the Tisha B'Av. To see outside of the Tzaysim Yerushalayim. To the Shuvi Yerushalayim. To go back to Yerushalayim. It's going to come a day. Shofar is going to blow. Mashiach is going to come. Beis HaMikdash is going to be rebuilt. We're going to feel HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Yidin are going to once again be the people that we're supposed to be. The world is once again going to be the world that it's supposed to be. V'haya Hashem l'melech al koha eretz. We make a bracha, nachem. Be comforted. There's a nachama. There's a geula to come. There's a future. And if we can see past the darkness, and we can see into the future, 
that we can go from the Tzaisim Yerushalayim to the Shuvi Yerushalayim. Mir Hashem, this should be the last year that we ever have to celebrate Tishbav. So I hope this is the only Tishbav podcast we ever make. And if you want to make any comments or find out more about the show, you can go to rabbilaski.com. And uh, Mir Hashem, we should all have a true Nechama.